Why do we pray? And now, let's twist that for just for a moment. Why do we pray? Doesn't God know everything? Some of you are like, okay, this trick question. Don't want to answer too quick there. God knows, God knows everything. Does God know our needs? God knows our needs. So why do we pray? Do I have to tell him what I need? All kinds of reasons why. We, but think about it. The most important reason why we pray is because God wants to know us and for us to know him. So we may share things that are going on, things that we're stressed out about even, concerns that we have. We actually may have a list of things, you know, God, how about this and this and this? But really, those things are, are not the goal. The goal is to get to know God, to get closer to Him, to build a more personal relationship with Him. Prayer is all about that relationship. It's not about the stuff. In fact, you think about it. If you only come to God and you do all the talking, what kind of relationship is that? A anybody know somebody who talks a lot? A Amy talks a lot. <laughs> okay, if you're doing all the talking to God, if you're the one who, who's like a talk a lot, right? And, and you're the one who's doing all the talking. When does God get a chance to have a word in? See, prayer is not all about us giving our shopping list, telling them the things we want, you know, getting all the things off of our chest. In fact, sometimes maybe we ought to keep a few things on the chest. <laughs> but prayer is about us also listening. Now you think about it. How much time do you spend in listening to God in prayer? The challenge is many of us come, we talk, and we leave. We literally say, amen in Jesus' name, and then we say goodbye. Or some of us may even talk with God throughout the day and carry on a kind of running conversation. But again... We're doing the talking. <laughs> when do you build time into your praying to listen? Because you see, prayer, it, it, and you, you tell me, do you believe that prayer is about us getting what we want, or is it about us having a relationship with God? Relationship. You believe that? Absolutely. You're not just giving in because I've told you that. Okay, Wade, did you bring it? Yes. I need it, sir. Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He invites us then to listen. To, oh, no, 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 oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Open it, please. That was interesting. <laughs> okay, now, how do we use this? Yeah. That's your side? This is my side. That's uh, okay. Side. Okay, cool. Okay. Okay. Cross them so that there's an X. We're going to cross them so there's an X. Okay. Okay, you already crossed it, so I don't need to cross it, right? Put an arm in here. Okay. An arm in here. An arm in here. An arm in here. And then whatever object you're lifting goes here. Yeah, whatever. So, like, we could... Like this, we could actually, the, on TV, they say you can pick up a refrigerator, right? Like, so like we could pick up this, the, you know, the communion table, and, and Shirley and all the ladies wouldn't get too nervous about that, right? Or my Debbie. or yeah. So we, we could, all kinds of things. Because have you seen these? Right? Okay, you put pressure against this, and you can literally, you can literally pick up a refrigerator, just two guys. Okay, but now, no, no, you, no, 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 no. Pick up the refrigerator by yourself. <laughs> but you got the straps. You got everything you need, right? It's called help. Help? Yes. Wimp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Wade. Let's hear it. <laughs> the, 
the straps there are an illustration. How many of you have ever used a yoke? Didn't think so. And I'm not talking about an egg yolk, <laughs> okay? A yolk. It's something that was used. It was usually made of wood, and it, and it put two animals together and bound them together so that they could work together. Well, in, back in Jesus' day, they used these wood yokes, and they're like big ones. In fact, the, the, some people say that Jesus built the best yokes. That's one of these he was known for. His yokes fit perfectly. Well, what did the yoke do? Well, it would tie two animals together. And as they would work together underneath that yoke, and you'd want it comfortable enough so that it didn't damage the animal, wound them, score, hurt them. And so you, the, those two animals could work as a team. It's what that, what's that called, Wade? Yeah, straps. They're arm forklifts? Forearm forklifts. That's a, that's a form of a yoke. Do you see it? Where two people are t taking and putting their resources, their strength, their abilities together. And, and you'll have to, Wade will show you afterwards. He'll grab one of you and you can go move the refrigerator around the church after <laughs> worship, okay? Yeah. Just don't spill it, so keep it up straight because there's a lot of stuff inside there, Wade, okay? But, but. Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Let's look at Matthew 11, see the context of the passage. Matthew 11, the, the portion of the text that I'm looking at is verse 25 through 30. <clears throat> it's an interesting passage because John <clears throat> has... Um, is losing his life. John the Baptist is losing his life. He's um, being killed by Herod because he, well, he got a little bit too close to home in pointing out Herod's sin and told him that, you know, you're living, you've actually married your brother's wife and that's not a good thing. And Herod didn't like it. And so he, so John's being killed. Um, and the question is, you know, who did you go out to see when you went out to the desert? Well, you went out to see a prophet. And the prophet was preparing the way. But even, even though John is really special, Jesus says he, he's least in the kingdom compared to anybody else who gets to see what John didn't get to see. John dies before Jesus goes to the cross. And so he won't get to experience the cross. But Jesus is saying everyone who experiences the cross, everyone who experiences him gets to see something that even John didn't get to experience. He'll, he'll go and say, and say, well, John was out there. He was out eating in the desert, and you didn't like that. So I came, and I'm meeting with tax collectors and sinners and, and even going to parties with them and telling them about the kingdom of God. You don't like that. Jesus right now, as that um, siren is sounding, as there's an emergency taking place, Lord, you meet their needs according to your riches. You show them your love, Lord. Put somebody there who can be your hands, can be your arms, can be your voice, can show your comfort and your peace, Lord. Minister to them, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Yeah. <clears throat> Jesus goes on and says that there are some cities that he's been in. In fact, um, he mentions them, Chorazin, and, and he says, look, I've been here. I've actually been healing people here. I've been doing all kinds of things here, and they're not taking note. In fact, for those who, who watch and see what the Messiah has done, and they don't take note, and it's unimportant and doesn't matter to them, it'll be worse for them than it will be for Sodom and Gomorrah, two places that totally rejected God. And Jesus is trying to lay out kind of a, a setting where he's saying, look, you're out there. In fact, he's only even going to point out that there's a, this religious behavior. And, and he's talking about the Pharisees. In fact, if you go to Matthew 23, you'll see that Jesus talks even more about the Pharisees and how they're putting all kinds of legalism on the people, all kinds of demands that the people have to do in order just to come to worship. And the, and the books that they had, the Midrash was one of the books that they had that was a, all about how to keep the Sabbath. And, and, and think about a book like that that's got all, and in this case it would have been a Torah, but anyways, a scroll that would have been listing details upon details upon details of how you keep the Sabbath holy. Details none of us could keep up with. And Jesus is saying all these things, this legalism, all this is hindering you from seeing God. And then he comes to verse 25 and he says, look, I've come to you and I'm going to show you God the Father. That's my job. In fact, it's the only reason why I'm here, is to help you see God the Father. Look at verse 25, then he says, 
At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. Incidentally, didn't Jesus already say to the children, he says, children, come to me. Let the little children come to me, because unless you become like a child, you shall not enter the kingdom of God. Jesus has been trying to say to people, look, there's a simple thing that you've got to do and you've just got to come to me. In fact, look, look, look at how he says it. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. What did he say, John 14? I'm the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father but through me. There's no other way. Now, in, in a world where we want to coexist religiously and we want to accept all kinds of roads, we want, and our culture wants there to be multiple ways to get to God. And God does give us many opportunities to come to Him. But He says, there's one way to know me, and that's to know my Son. There is no other. Jesus will go on. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus has given us an invitation and the invitation is to come to him. And you see, unless we come to him, we're not going to get what he then offers we must come to Jesus in order to get the rest and the refreshment and literally to get salvation. The only way to get to the kingdom of heaven is through Jesus Christ. Incidentally, um, how, how many of you have ever been to the Grand Canyon? Show of hands. Wow, most of you. Cool. How many of you have ever been to the north side of the Grand Canyon? Cool. Did you know there's only one road into the north side of the rim of the Grand Canyon? One road. One road. It's not even open all year long. But you know what? I don't see any protests. I don't see any, any signs being held up. You know, this is terrible. There's only one road to get to the north rim of the Grand Canyon. No, instead, the ones that go there, it's pretty special, isn't it? Sometimes you can also get there by hiking from the river. But you go down, and then you hike back up. It's a fun hike. It'll get you guys ready. <laughs> North Rim of the Grand Canyon. We do not complain that there's only one way. Instead, what do we do? We celebrate the fact that there's one way. And at certain times of the year, you can actually get out there. During the wintertime, it's actually shut down. It's snowed in, and so they just close down the North Rim of the Grand Canyon. But through about six or eight months of the year, there's the road that goes around there and you get in there. But folks, there's one road that leads to heaven. One. And the way is Jesus Christ. It's a person. He's the Son of God. That's what Jesus is saying here. Look, the Father makes himself known through me. And I'm the only way. This is Jesus was saying. I'm the only way for you to come to know him. Salvation comes by none other than through Jesus Christ. And here's Jesus trying to make it as plain as he can. Come to me. Come to me. Jesus is inviting us to come to him. If you want to see God, come look at Jesus. Are you tired? Are you weary? Are you struggling and stressed out with stuff in life? Come to Jesus. We, we seek all kinds of other ways of, having, of finding peace, right? Comfort, of trying to deal with anxiety and pressure. And we're going to take it, most of us are going to take care of life ourselves, right? Because you see, we're somewhat self-centered. We're somewhat egotistical. We're somewhat, you know, we've got the ability. We're going to make it on our own. You guys are going to make it on your own, right? <laughs> Thanks, Simon. <laughs> Guess what? Who gave you the brain you've got? Oh, you earned it, didn't you? Yeah, it's a muscle, right? So, you know, obviously you're training it, right? Who, who gave you the family you're in? Who gave you the country you live in? Who gave you the opportunities that you have? You see, there is lots more that has come to us that we didn't do anything at all on our own that was given to us as a gift, undeserved, unmerited, 
We didn't earn it in any way, shape, or form. Now, we can decide what we're going to do with what we have, yes? And that's why Jesus says, now, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We need to, to learn to team up with Jesus Christ. That's the image of the, what do you call them again? Forklifts, Wade? Forearm forklifts or something like that? It's the image that we're trying to show that Jesus is inviting us to come to him and to partner with him, to team up with him in whatever it is that we're facing in our life. Students, I, please don't try to do this alone. I know you're all brilliant, and, and I can tell you're all in great shape, right? But please don't do this alone. And especially as you go into the military, don't go there without God. Realize that he wants to be a partner with you in whatever you're doing. He doesn't want you out there on that battlefield alone. Isn't that one of the things you're going to learn? I mean, hopefully you're already learning it, aren't you? I mean, aren't they already trying to, the Durbex, aren't they already trying to show you that, look, you don't do this by yourselves? You've got to go out, you're going to be running and encouraging one another, I hope, right? If somebody go, falls and crashes, are you going to just ignore them and leave them behind? Not if you're a Marine, Okay? You're not going to allow the wounded to, to, to sit out there on the battlefield. You're going to continue to bring everyone back home, right? There's a responsibility that we have to team up together. I'm challenging us. Jesus is saying, come to me if you're weary. If you're carrying a load that's too heavy for you, why carry it alone? Oh, yesterday I had the fun of putting up a door. It was sure a lot better to have help than to try to put that door up all by myself. And, you know, some of us are just, you know, just, you know, stupid enough to try to do things all on our own. But, but, but you know, if you're really smart, you can learn how to use tools and things like that, right? So Debbie and I were unloading these boxes of the other night, and they were these big crates. I don't know how much they were, but they were cabinets. They were, the, the boxes were this thick and that wide, and six feet long, and we couldn't hold them. However, by working together, using leverage, using a cart, we were able to bring that whole thing, to bring three of them inside the building, and put them in, and eventually put them all together. Jesus is inviting us to come to him, and to partner with him, to team up with him. And too many of us are going through life, trying to do life individually on our own without going to Jesus. Or, when do we go to Jesus? You know, when you're in trouble, when you're desperate, when, uh, you know, when the speaker makes a noise. You go to Jesus when you can't figure out any other way. What are you thinking? Why, why wait to go to Jesus when nothing else will work? Okay, God, now I need your help. And God's saying like, yeah, really? What took you so long? Jesus is inviting us to team up and partner with him. Will you? Will you let Jesus take control instead of you? A few of you are controllers, right? Like to be in control? Like to be in charge? You know, take care of your own fate, right? Guess what? You don't have the control. Jesus is inviting you to trust him. He says, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. It, it, in fact, the, another way of saying that is, it says, my yoke fits well if you'll wear it. And, it. and it won't be uncomfortable. This is really interesting, isn't it? Jesus is saying, if you're tired and weary, what should you do? Go work. Isn't that what he's saying here? He said, look, if you're tired, if you're worn out, put a yoke on and work. Really? That's the way to refreshment? Yeah, that's what Jesus is saying. If you will team up with me, because you're going to face life regardless, right? And as you're facing life, he says, if you'll team up with me, if you'll partner with me, we'll carry this together. And when Jesus partners with us, I'm thinking the load gets a lot easier. I like it when I'm carrying something with somebody else who's stronger. Amen. Right? <laughs> Especially if you're with a group of guys and they're all strong and if they're stronger than you, 
oh, it makes it a lot easier. Then you just kind of join in, right? And, you know, hold on as they carry. And, and that's kind of what Jesus is inviting us to do. He's saying, team up with me, partner with me, put the yoke on your shoulders and we'll do this together and just hold on and I'll carry. Just hold on to me and, and we'll get through this together. But let's do this together. And Jesus is inviting that kind of partnership. He, as he's looking at this, he's come to me, all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, you. And then what's the next phrase? Interesting phrase. He says, and learn from me. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Jesus is inviting us into this kind of discipling relationship where we can learn about him and about life by partnering up with him. <clears throat> what we want to avoid is dumping on God and then leaving. And, and some of us do that. Dump, dump, okay, God, oh, here's the big mess, you know, take care of it, see you later. Uh, by the way, the mess is my fault, I sinned, I blew it, but you fix it. No, Jesus is wanting us to do something more than that. Jesus is wanting us to partner with him and to learn about how we deal with life by teaming up with him. In Matthew 23, Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, so you must be careful to do everything they tell you. But do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Jesus is saying, will you come? Will you humble yourself? Will you release your, your burdens to me? Because if you will, if you'll listen to me and you'll learn from me, I'm going to give you the strength to get through this. You see, Jesus really wants to refresh you. And we're saying, it's kind of hard to get refreshed this morning. It's warm in here, and, and I'm falling asleep, and I'm tired. And, and, but Jesus wants to give you, yes, wants to give you his energy. Jesus wants to give you rest. You know, when, whenever you're exercising, you've got to have recovery time, Right? And the, and the run on the mountain is great for that, right? You run uphill, and that's when you recover, and then you run downhill, and that's when you work out, right? <laughs> Not quite that way, huh? <laughs> so we recover. Now, have you, run, have you run up Lover's Lane yet on the pavement? So you guys are going that way. You're not circling the other way. Oh, good. Good. You're back to the right way. So you're running up on the pavement, right? And it's, what, about a mile back up there almost, isn't it? And it's pretty much up the whole way. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to recover before you get there, right? Because you're moving and you get some up and down hill before you get to that spot. Then you come down the long stretch over there and curve down the mountain and all. Now you got the, the run up Lover's Lane. Now, where are you going to get your refreshment there? Well, you got to maybe stop and some, sometimes, you, no, nobody walks, right? I would disagree with that. Thanks, Simon. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> because, because a heart rate still will get to a place where if it's pumping too hard and working too hard, it's going to have to get recovery. It's got to get a break. And so you may actually have to slow down. You may have to walk. Until the oxygen gets going again, the heart gets recovered, and then you can pick it up again and move on. And Jesus is inviting us to recover with him. Recover with him. He's inviting us to come to him in our moments, even when we're getting weary, and to get his energy. In fact, team up, let him become now our strength. Sometime when you're running up the hill like that, do what Debbie used to do, and she grabs a hold of my belt or something like that, and then pull me up, right? <laughs> there, there is something that, that comes in the assistance of somebody else. Have you ever watched a bike ride, Tour de France, as an example? They're going up pretty steep hills, right? Now, they go a lot faster than some of us do on bike. And so they're able to go fast enough so that there's a draft behind them. 
And we need to get like that with those bike riders where we need to get a draft behind Jesus Christ. And Jesus is inviting us to come and to get behind him. And that's the way some of these riders are able to ride even longer distance because they're drafting behind their teammates. Until you, and if you watch the domiciles, the, the domestiques, the, the guys that are the, almost the slaves, you know, they're pumping and riding as hard as they can. And all of a sudden you'll see one go, Ugh, and he just totally gives up and he falls off and he finishes 10 minutes behind everybody else. Because he just wore himself out, what, trying to pull somebody else. Jesus is so much better than the domestics. He is riding there ahead of us and he's saying, draft behind me and I'll pull you along if you'll just stay with me. Jesus is inviting us to allow him to lead us forward. And so he says, little children, come to me. Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. God loves you. Do you realize that? God loves you and wants to meet your needs. God wants to help you. God wants to come alongside you and give you the strength that you need. But you've got to be willing to humble yourself and come to him. And that's our challenge is pride gets in the way. Our ego is so, so strong and we're going to simply make this on our own. And God is saying, come to me, you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hebrews 10 says, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. God's saying, draw near to God and he'll give you what you need. It's, it's James, but he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says, God opposes the proud. Your biggest enemy that keeps you from receiving what God wants to give you is your pride. God opposes the proud, but he gives grace and favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. And then he gives this incredible message. He says, submit yourselves to God resist the devil and he will flee from you. Some of the battle that we're fighting, folks, is against sin. And we're giving in to sin because we're fighting that battle by ourselves. And he's saying, look, submit to God first. That's the first step. Then resist the devil and because of that, Satan will flee from you. Wow, that's pretty powerful stuff. God opposes the proud, gives grace to the humble. And then he goes on, he says, come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Students, you're needing to humble yourselves here, aren't you? Because <laughs> here's the challenge. Who's number one in your class? Do you know? Who's the best? <clears throat> Unless you learn to work as a team, there is no best. Humble yourselves under God's hand. And he's inviting that to all of us, isn't he? Humble yourself under God. Admit your imperfections, your shortcomings, your sin. Allow Jesus to point that stuff out to you. Come to him, and then you'll get refreshment and rest. Let's pray. Well, Jesus, you're inviting us to come to you. And some of us are so tired, Lord, it's, it's hard to even get up this morning. We're weary with um, just stuff we've done. Maybe it was the concert last night. Perhaps it's the, the run we did yesterday. It, it may be the, the work we did outside. Uh, worse than that, there's a spiritual battle some of us are fighting. And it's a battle with sin and temptation and guilt and remembering things from the past, hurts and heartache and difficulties. God, we need to turn the stuff over to you. Jesus, we hear you right now saying, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come and learn from me. Jesus, we want to yoke up with you. We want to learn from you. But we're not sure how to do that sometimes because we're so independent. 
And we sometimes simply forget to seek you out. And I pray, Jesus, for each person here, that, Lord, we would be coming to you and remember and, and, and be awake to your Holy Spirit inviting us to come to you this day. And I thank you, Lord, for the refreshment that you want to give to us, to, to the refreshment that's going to give us energy to face the toughest times, just like the energy that you received that enabled you to go to that cross because of the refreshment you got from being in the presence of your Father. Though weary, you also experienced rest. And so, Lord, come. Come, come, Jesus. Are you carrying something that Jesus is inviting you to give to him? You may want to do a very simple thing. Picture whatever it is you're carrying. Hold it in your hand. Look at Jesus standing right there in front of you. And take your hand and turn it over and drop whatever it is you're carrying into his hands. Jesus. There's people here that need your rest and your refreshment that can only come from you. There's people here that need to partner with you in ways that they've never done truly in the past. Help us to do it. And to believe and to know that you're there for us and that you're inviting us to come to you. In Jesus' name.